Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to show you how I make my little FPV pods uh, that involves a camera, video transmitter, all in one little swappable unit uh, it's powered from the balance port of your battery, either 3S, 4S, whatever you want uh, and you can swap that from, camera, uh, from plane to plane uh, and all I do is just tape it on the top with a bit of sticky tape like that Plug that into the battery inside, and there you go. This plane is ready for FPV. I like to swap my cameras around from plane to plane because I have a lot of planes, of course, and I test a lot of different cameras. So I've made it so that I can uh, swap cameras and transmitters and uh, swap them to different planes very, very quick and easy. So what you're going to need is a camera, a video transmitter, some antennas, uh, and a little wire lead, and a, a 3S or 4S balance lead extension. All of these are available at Banggood and I'll pop links in the video description so that you can uh, buy them yourself. Support base that I use is just some PVC plastic. This is a little PVC plastic uh, plumbing tube. Cut off a little bit, heat it up and flatten it out into uh, a little L shape or a flat shape like that. That's very very quick and easy to do. In fact I'll show you how to do that right now. So first up I'm going to Cut a little bit of this PVC plastic. That's about 25 millimeters or an inch. Now this thin stuff is very easy to work with. You can just use tin snips to, to clip it. And what I'm going to do now is just heat it with a heat gun gently. Doesn't take long to soften up. And then just flatten it out and hold it flat until it uh, sets, which is, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. So there we have a flat piece. Now I need to bend it up at a right angle. So I'll heat it a bit more. Hold it up at a right angle like that. So there we go, that's basically the mount for the camera here and the video transmitter up there. And to neaten it up I'd probably clip off all the corners and just give it a hit with sandpaper. There we go. Now let's look at the individual components. Uh, first up, we'll go with the video transmitter. This is my preferred video transmitter. It's uh, small, simple, but works very well. It's only 200 milliwatts. You really don't need any more than that. Uh, you can get 600 milliwatt transmitters, but uh, you're really just going to interfere with everyone else, and it doesn't actually give you a lot more range. So 200 milliwatts is the sweet spot, I think. This one has a push button and an L a single-digit LED display, so you can... Uh, show the channel and the band that you're on. Little cable for connecting with bare wires to whatever you want. It has a rubber ducky antenna but you know they're pretty useless. Cable plugs in like that. Now that gives you ground, audio, video, ground and 7 to 24 volts. I'm just going to use the video, ground and uh, power or voltage. So that's those three wires there. Red is the power supply. Black is the ground and yellow is the video signal. All right, let's move on to the camera. Uh, I have a Cadex. I haven't tried these cameras before, so this will be interesting. Turbo SDR1, uh, which is a CMOS camera, 1200 TV line, 16.9 or 4.3 aspect ratio. Nice yellow color. And we get some nuts and bolts and hex wrenches, which is really good. And we get mounts and the on-screen display setup keyboard as well. Look at that in depth a bit more later on. And we need some decent antennas as well. 
Uh, my preferred antennas are these uh, Amway circularly polarised and you need to buy SMA or RP SMA depending on which transmitter you use. This one uses, uh, for this transmitter we actually need the, the red ones which have a hole and a nut. The transmitter has a thread and a prong. So that's a decent antenna that fits on there. And to connect it all up we need a wire lead and a balanced port extension cable, either 4S or 3S. So now we've got all our bits, we're ready to go. Oh, I forgot to mention we need a little servo extension cable too. So I'm just popping the Caddx camera into its little mount. Sort of just have to decide whether you're going to have the camera tilting forwards or tilting backwards depending on which way you have this mount. I usually have to tilt my cameras down a little bit at the nose so I'm mounting it this way and we put a little uh, locking bolt in there to hold it in position. And that is just going to sit up there like that. Now to make up all the necessary cables all the connection is going to be done through this wire lead here and we're going to have power coming in from the uh, I've decided this will be a 4S setup. The power will come from the 4S battery balance port and we're just going to take off the 4S connection and the ground and we're going to solder that onto this plug here that'll just be providing power. These two will provide power to both the camera and the video transmitter and it'll pass the video signal through that way. So we can actually clip this orange wire here because we don't need the signal wire going back to the power. Now to connect to the video transmitter here are the three relevant wires here and I'm going to solder on a uh, servo style socket on there so that this cable can plug into it. And on the Caddx, Caddx comes with two cables. This one is the all the connections plus the on-screen display and once you've finished with the on-screen display I guess you can just swap to this normal cable here. Uh, now that has a little one of these tiny little plugs on it but what I actually want is uh, that that plug on there so I'm going to swap those. So here's the fun part here's where you have to commit to what you're doing. We'll start <clears throat> start with the video transmitter. If there's one thing I don't quite like with these Eshine transmitters is that these cables are, are not silicon covered they're sort of quite stiff uh, which makes them a bit brittle I think so you have to kind of be careful with them so these ones I'm not going to use them that's the audio and the ground for the audio so I can just get rid of them now I said before we're going to need the female or the socket side of this cable connected to there so we just need to solder that onto there now for the camera there are the three wires, that's the on-screen display setup, we'll leave them but we'll clip this off. And the other side of that little servo extension, the male side, will get soldered onto there. And now we go to the Y cable, and we'll just clip off one of these ends. And solder on the 4S balance extension cable there. Now with these balance extension cables you can just pull out all these ones that you don't need there and we don't need this signal wire here we can clip that off as well. So that is going to get connected to there and as I said that's just providing power to both of these ends here. Alright let's get to soldering. So just insulating all of them now with some heat shrink. And now we can connect it all up and see how we've gone. Wrong cable. 
video transmitter, plug that into the Y lead, camera, plug that into the other end of the Y lead. So now you can see we have video transmitter connected through the Y lead to the camera. So the signal wire connects all the way through, the power and ground connect both of them and the power comes from the balance port. So that's all powered up, I just have to get the correct channel now. E1, there we go, we're on screen. Now this looks like it's set on 16.9 so why don't I change that to 16.9. So there we get the view from the Caddx. It looks quite warm colours, I'd say, yellowy. Nice bright image. There we are. Okay, all we have to do is mount this on our little mount and we are ready to pop it on a plane and go for a fly. Actually, I'll check out the on-screen display settings a little bit later on too, once we get it all mounted up and ready to go. Now to mount the video transmitter, I usually go for a combination of double-sided tape and a cable tie. So I'll pop some double sided tape down there. So I've still got access to the button and the LED there so I can change the channel and the band and I'll just pop a cable tie around here. So that's solid and for the camera I usually use again double sided tape and a little bit of normal tape. If you're doing a more permanent setup you can uh, bolt through here I guess but uh, this is w working for me pretty well. Alright so we just position this on the front tape it down and squish it all down there there we go there's my little pod I'll plug it in again we do end up with a fair bit of excess uh, cable here you can shorten these as you need them if you know exactly what your mounting situation is going to be but uh, at the moment I'm just sort of putting it together nice and quickly so I can show you uh, you can yeah, you can shorten these right down. You, you don't actually need the Y lead if you're going to have a permanent setup, but I like to be able to swap and swap and change, and it means that I can have the camera up on the nose of a long nose plane and plug into the battery way back in the canopy. Let's have a closer look at the Catix camera now. If we push the button, we'll bring up the menu. Auto exposure, white balance, day night, image enhance. Let's have a look at what we've got there. Contrast, sharpness, color gain, noise reduction and return. Video settings, video standard or PAL. Go to video settings again. We've got NTSC or PAL. Image ratio, 16, 9 or 43. Wide dynamic range. Let's see what the options are here on or off basically they're saying open or closed and we'll leave it on return language reset save and exit all right so that looks like about it with this camera uh, there's no actual flying on screen display so there's nothing to set up there as far as i can see save and exit now something you have to be aware of when you're matching cameras and, and powering it this way i'm powering it straight from the flight battery uh, 16 volts so your camera and your video transmitter have to be able to run on 16 volts and I know that these do. Some cameras only run on 5 volts. Some video transmitters can be powered from the flight battery and will provide 5 volts for the camera so you need to read the specs you need to buy the suitable camera for your application. As I said this one the Cadex camera can accept uh, 2S, 3S, 4S power supply as can the video transmitter. I have the little FPV pod mounted on the nose of my Ranger 1600 
great FPV ship for windy conditions which we have today. Let's go for a little fly and see how it goes. That's a bit better. Now I've got a lovely clear signal. It's very overcast but we're getting really nice greens. Great signal. Getting the sea moss jaggy edges on the horizon and that, but uh, gosh that, <laughs> that green grass looks unnaturally green. I did think the image was a bit yellowy when I first had a look at it, but um, this is going Nicely, it's got good details in the clouds and the ground at the same time with these difficult lighting conditions. Fair bit of water around. It's lying around, you can hear me probably, around behind me now. Head back up the park. This is a lovely view. I like this camera. Similar view to the monster or the eagle really. Doesn't have the voltage on screen. Not getting too much interference which is good. You can put a power filter in there if you are getting uh, jaggy horizontal lines or, or uh, diagonal lines going across your image. Oh, nice big gust there. It's going to land it, but I'm going to be too high. Oh, I'll just put it down anyway. Swooping up and down. We have landed. Very good. That's the Cadex Turbo SDR1 camera. The Esheen uh, video transmitter with the little Amway uh, RPSMA antenna on my little swappable FPV pod on the Ranger 1600. I'll put links to all of these things in the description and uh, I'm off for a bit more flying. Thanks for watching.